Hey folks, it's the Best and Fly here, hope you're well. Today I'm out and about on another bike review on a bit of a chilly December day on this, the splendid uh, Triumph Speedmaster. This is a newly updated model for the 2022 model year. It's had some uh, engine upgrades and some bits and pieces for Euro 5. When I last rode this a few years back, I absolutely loved it. Let's take this new one for a spin, see if she's still as good as I remember. So the new Speedmaster then, it uh, came out in this sort of incarnation in around about I think 2017-ish, something like that it was announced. I last rode one in 2018 and I absolutely loved the bike. But uh, for this model year, 2021 stroke 2022, they've made a number of changes to the bike like they have with a lot of the Bonneville range, mainly to bring it in line with Euro 5 I think, but they've taken the opportunity to make a few tweaks to the bike. And uh, given I liked this bike so much when I rode it back in 2018, I thought I'd uh, give it another go, see if I can notice any difference. Now, of course, it is a while back when I last rode it, so I'm going to come at it afresh. But I have to say, as somebody that uh, never regarded himself as a cruiser man, I do find the Speedmaster a very nice bike. Of course, when you're riding cruisers, you do have to adapt your riding style a little bit. One of the things you do notice with the Speedmaster, if you push on, as you go around the corners, you can scrape the foot pegs, and that could be a little bit alarming when you first do it. But you kind of adapt your riding style accordingly. Now this particular bike has Trump's 1200cc unit, it's brilliant, the high torque version I think. And it's got loads of shove low down, and goes like stink. But these bikes aren't all about speed of course, they're about enjoying the ride. I'm going to be a little bit careful today, as you can see it's a bit wet and slippy on the road. So I don't want to come sliding off this brand new model that uh, Triumph UK have been kind enough to lend me for this review. So some of the changes then are things like some cosmetic changes to the way the bike looks and I'll show you those when we do the walk round. But also some engine internals, some uh, lighter moving parts to make it spin up a bit quicker make it a bit more efficient and of course I guess to help it pass those new tighter Euro 5 regulations. I have to say it feels lovely on here. One of the complaints I had when I rode it before, I'm just going to knock down a gear, was that it was a little bit vibey in certain gears, particularly in second gear. Now in second gear there's a little bit of vibration through the seat but it's nothing to write home about. I would definitely mark that down as character but character in a good way. Okay so uh, what do I make of the comfort on this bike then? Well the first thing that you notice when you jump on a cruiser of course is the riding position. The handlebars are nice and laid back with the, I don't know what you call this style of handlebar but I do love these big swept back handlebars. They make it very easy to control and personally I find it very comfortable. I've whinged before about the fact that I've got uh, arthritis in my shoulders and if my hands and arms are outstretched too much sports bike style it gives me a lot of pain in my shoulders whereas this my arms are virtually by my sides makes for a very comfortable ride for me. The seat itself has been redesigned since that 2017-ish uh, model. Really comfortable seat on here. You are sitting pretty much bolt upright on here though so you get the full force of the wind and I imagine if you did a long ride on it you might start to get a bit of pain in the lower back because uh, I've found that before on cruisers where all your weight is back down through your coccyx as opposed to some of it on your legs and arms as it would be on a bike when you canted forward. That said, this is one, I think I'm not exaggerating when I say this is one of the most comfortable seats I've been on on a cruiser. It feels beautiful. And then the other thing about the riding position of course is you've got this feet forward position. They're not too extreme on here. They're sort of uh, middling forward. If you're on a Harley they'd be up here and you'd be getting draft up your trouser leg. This is sort of uh, middle way if you like. Hello, first white van problem of the day. And uh, I can't actually blame the white van because it's actually a couple of cyclists that's uh, holding it up. Get a lot of cyclists around this way. Turns out cyclists like exactly the same routes as motorcyclists, which is fair enough. And in the case of these particular cyclists, we'll uh, cut them some slack. Morning ladies. Lovely day for a bike ride. This engine is beautiful on here. It's one of the favourite things I like about the uh, Speedmaster, it just rumbles along. I mean, it's the same unit, albeit tweaked, I think, probably for a bit of low down torque, as you find in things like the uh, T120 Bonneville, the Bobber, 
even the Speed Twin all have variants of this engine but it's an absolute peach in all those bikes and I really love it. For real world riding, the sorts of speeds that you do on, on roads, you know, 0 to 70, absolutely brilliant. Brakes on here seem okay, got twin discs on the uh, Speedmaster. Just have a little look behind me, let's give them a handful. Yeah, seem pretty good, ABS just cutting a little bit there but it is a slippery day. And a quick look at the rear brake. Yeah, not a lot on the rear, but just enough to settle the bike down in the corners if you need it. Right, just being a little bit careful as I come around the corner, just wary of those pegs. No problem so far, just listen to those beautiful pipes on here. This is one of the very few bikes that uh, I've ridden that I think uh, I would just leave the standard exhaust pipes on. They not only sound lovely, but they look lovely too. Triumph have done a top job on the styling of this, like all Triumphs these days. The fit and finish on it is just beautiful. Things like the mirrors are nice. They look a bit Mickey Mouse, but I'll show you later when I do the walk around. They've got little embellishes on the back that look nice. The little sprinkling of Triumph badges around the place look nice. The writing on the fuel cap here. I like the fact that it's not got any sort of fakery on the fuel cap. One thing I don't like about it is the uh, instrumentation. The big dial on here, which is straight off uh, the bobber, I think. It looks all right. I mean, in terms of its clarity, you can read what, what you need to see on it. It's got a fuel gauge and a uh, gear position indicator, which are all things I like. I just don't like that big plastic surround. I think it would be nicer if it was the twin dials like you get on the T120. That would look brilliant. Also, yeah, unlike the bobber one, it's un unadjustable. It just sits at that angle. I think on the bobber you can adjust that. But a small point, well, I'm trying to find things I don't like about the bike, and I do struggle a bit. Yeah, this sort of riding around the bat lanes is absolutely brilliant. Sit nice and low on here as well, so it's very confidence inspiring, even though it's quite a heavy bike. I'll go through the numbers in a minute when I do the walk around. But it doesn't feel heavy when you're on it, or if you're sat on it, moving it around on your garageway. Driveway, rather. And it's easy to move around because the uh, weight is nice and low. Handling is surprisingly good on here as well. I actually prefer this bike over Trump's bobber. And uh, when I rode this last time, that previous variant of it, I was very close to buying one. I must admit I'm still quite tempted if I had room in the garage. This is the standard bike. They come now, of course, in the Gold Line versions as well, which are limited editions for a few hundred quid more, with slightly nicer paint schemes and a bit of hand-painted Gold Line work on it. I think I'd probably stump up the extra cash and go for one of those, because they've toned down the, the paint scheme on the standard bike a little over the previous model. By which I mean it's now just in this solid colour. It's nice in this red. Get out there quick. But the standard bikes previously had some coach work on the tank, which I rather liked. Some nice pops and crackles coming out the back of the exhaust as well. Stuck behind this car now, so I can't really thrash it. But uh, yeah, this engine just sounds glorious. We'll be better on a summer's day, mind you, recording this middle of December. Don't let it be said that I don't bring you real world reviews. Nice to see a decent brake reservoir on a new bike as well, not those horrible plastic urine sample ones. Switch gear on here is all nice and positive as well, very simple. It's a relatively simple bike, but they're all quite big and chunky, easy to feel through your gloved hands. Talking of gloves, got a new pair of gloves on and a new jacket that you've not seen before. So if you're interested in what I'm wearing, Stick around and stay tuned to the end of the video till after the little credits bit and I'll do one of my little fashion segments and I'll talk you through the new jacket gloves that I'm wearing just to save all those questions about Ooh, what was that jacket you were wearing or whatever so uh, if you're interested in that stick around to the end of the video for that handling's really nice such a nice relaxed ride on here summertime along the coast would be beautiful as opposed to middle of winter just outside Aylesbury all right, so while I'm uh, trundling along behind this car, let's use the uh, magic of uh, editing and uh, I'll do the walk around and show you the bike. All right, let's uh, take you through the spec then. I haven't written these down so I don't make any mistakes as I am prone to do. Let's take a look at this bike. All right, here we go. First off, uh, the engine on here, as I mentioned, it's the now 
fairly ubiquitous uh, Bonneville 1200 cc engine this is the HT high torque version uh, in the Speedmaster absolutely lovely unit on this one they've gone for a bit of the old fake carbery again I'm not too uh, keen on the fake carbs on things like the speed twin they don't do that however it's in keeping with the bike I guess that aside whether you like that or not the engine is absolutely beautiful to ride with in terms of the numbers it's a 270 degree crank uh, so that um, means you've got that lovely noise that you heard on the ride it's Euro 5 compliant puts out 77 brake horsepower at 6,100 100 rpm and 106 newton meters of torque of 4000 rpm in other words it gives you loads of power when you're not giving it loads of revs which is exactly what you want on this sort of bike for going around the lanes well i reckon so anyway Brakes wise, the bike has got uh, twin discs, I'm glad to say, with uh, some decent uh, two pot Brembo calipers. The discs on here are 310mm on the front, and on the back, we've got a single 255mm disc. I think with a single pot caliper, probably. There we go. Looks quite small, but uh, it does the job in terms of stabilising the bike. One of the things I do love about this, while we're looking at the uh, engine, sorry about the dirt on it, by the way, is uh, these exhausts. Look at these beauties. Uh, they've done that clever thing again, Triumph, where they've actually got all the um, catal catalyzers and what have you underneath the engine. Uh, but it looks like it's a straight through pipe very clever how they've done that top bit of a uh, bit of engineering by the guys let's take a look at the suspension then on the front we've got these uh, what look like pretty massive forks these are from uh, shower uh, and they're 47 mil non-adjustable on the front uh, and they've got these um gaiters on here as well which i think just help with the uh, with the retro look of it and on the back here you can see we've got this uh, single spring here i think it's adjustable for preload by the looks of it but you've got to get under the seat to do it so that's going to be quite tricky while we're talking about the seat newly designed seat for this model year it's got this extra sort of bolster to give you some extra support at the back and i have to say i think this is one of the most comfortable seats i've ridden on on a cruiser really really nice also on this particular bike you've got this sort of rack arrangement as opposed to the pillion seat i think the little pillion perch comes as standard i'm not sure but i prefer the looks without it in terms of the seat height it's very low at 705 millimeters so uh, absolutely no problem at all getting your feet on the deck even if you're the shortest of riders uh, what else to say the weight of the bike i said that it was a heavy old bike comes in at 263 kilograms wet which definitely is heavy but having said that because it is so low it doesn't it never feels like a heavy bike even when you're moving it around in your garage these big old uh, handlebars help out with that give you lots of leverage and you can move it around fine and uh, yeah because your feet are so secure on the ground it doesn't feel anywhere near as heavy as that and the handling again just doesn't suggest that sort of weight on a bike uh, what else uh, uh, spec wise uh, the tank capacity on here a little bit disappointing only 12 litres that tank so you're going to be uh, visiting the petrol station fairly often do love this badge on here this uh, you know with a proper relief old school one and also i quite like this uh, fuel cap where they've got the um you know triumph motorcycle stamped on it as well looks really good the, the the paint on here is lovely this red i do like it but it's now lacking all the coach lines that the previous model had if you want a bit of a fancier paint scheme then you've got to go for the gold line versions which cost you a few hundred quid more talking of price uh, the price of the bike uh, if you want the standard one it's twelve thousand one hundred pounds or if you want to go for the gold line version which comes with some fancier paint then you're looking at twelve thousand nine hundred so uh, eight hundred pounds difference um so up to you i guess whether you think that's worth it or not just while we're looking at some of the bits and pieces on here i mentioned on the ride that the mirrors were nice i like the fact they've got this little bit of the back here i think that looks really good uh, we've got this really nice light on here now let me just uh, switch her on switching her on by the way ignition is down here at the side look so if we turn her on there we can see what the uh, running light looks like there we go looks really cool i like that uh, some nice led indicators as well I, I quite like these they're big but i think they're in keeping with the bike um, lots of little um, touches on here that are really really nice now things like you know on the back of the seat you've got the triumph logo you've got the uh, nice triumph logo here uh, let me show you the switch gear as well very simple on this side you've got your information button uh, cruise control very handy to have um, and on this side you've got your riding mode button it's got two riding modes on this one rain and road which really is all you need isn't it you certainly don't need more than that i don't think all right i think that's pretty much it for the specs what else we've got to tell you let's have a look at my list Oh yeah, I should say as well as cruise control, of course you've got ABS, it's got switchable traction control, uh, torque assist clutch and all that lighting is of course LED. Okay, so welcome back aboard the bike then. And uh, yeah, so what's my sort of closing feelings on it? Have I lost my love for the Speedmaster in the four years since I rode one? Three or four years? No, I haven't. I absolutely love it still. I would definitely have one of these in the garage if I had space. Do those changes to the engine make much difference well if i'm brutally honest i can't tell the difference so if i had a speedmaster already i wouldn't rush out to buy the new one because it doesn't feel that much different to me if you've not got one you fancy one and you've got the money for a new one then go for the new one because uh, it's definitely a better bike unless of course you prefer those old paint schemes which i did so 
black marks for me are paint schemes now aren't quite as nice as they were before purely personal opinion of course other than that everything about the bike is beautiful hate doing reviews where there's not much negative to say people always accuse me of being desperate for content and not want to say anything to upset people that loan me the bikes but I can assure you nothing is further from the truth I've way more bikes than I could possibly review this is just a lovely bike and I still think of all the cruisers I've ridden which isn't loads to be fair it's a few Harleys a couple of Indians the big uh, Rocket 3 the Thunderbird this I think this is still my favorite you know it's nice and accessible it's not so big and unwieldy that you feel like you're gonna come a cropper at any moment yet it's got this amazing engine there's so much grunt if you want it handling is beautifully assured yeah really nice so thanks to Trot UK for lending me the bike for review thank you to you as ever for watching do leave your comments below what you think of the new bike compared to the old and if you're an owner of one of these if you've had one for a while any hints and tips for people that might be interested in buying one it's always interesting for others to read those below as well and don't forget fashion segment after the credits if you're interested in the jacket and these fancy new gloves that I'm wearing alright that's it for now look forward to speaking to you again soon Till then this has been the Mr and Fly cheerio Well thank you for sticking around to the bitter end of the video for my now infamous fashion segment. I said I'd talk you through the new bits of kit that I've been wearing, in particular my jacket and gloves. This is a new jacket for me, I've had it about a month. It is a motorcycle jacket but I've been wearing it just as much off the bike as on. It's from a company called Segura and this is called their Nacho jacket, N-A-T-C-H-O. Um, it's a lovely bit of kit, it's uh, CE rated at level A which is the lowest of those ratings uh, which basically means it's for urban use so ideal on a bike like this around town, stuff like that. Maybe not so good if you're going to go out on a track or something but it's got uh, you know pad in the shoulders and elbows it's got a pocket in the back for a back protection if you want it it has got a hood but it and it's but it's removable but I find on this particular jacket it doesn't flap around or anything when you're riding so that's absolutely fine uh, and it's really comfortable and stylish to wear I think price wise it comes in at 259.99 recommended retail price if you want to find your local dealer check out bikerheads.co.uk I'll put a link below the video so you can find your local dealer or if you want to buy online then sports bike shop is where I go you can get them for a bit of a reduced price there at the moment when I last checked as well again I'll put a link below to that all right so that's the jacket great bit of kit thoroughly recommend that next up new gloves all right new gloves then here we go these are also from that same company Segura uh, here we go this is what they look like um, they, they're sort of um, I suppose they're retro style um, gloves I can't remember the name of them I'll put it up on the screen um, but I really like these they've got that zip on the back which means that you can actually unzip them easily uh, to take them on and off even if your hand is already gloved and they've got these little um, bits on the front here it says sensor system so you can use your sat nav or your phone uh, through them okay they've got a bit of double stitching and padding at the, at the uh, palm if you put your hand down obviously and they've got this hard knuckle bit on the back so uh, yeah they, they feel lovely and warm as well even though technically I think they might even be a summer glove but as I say I'm recording this in December and I've only got these on and my hands have been absolutely toasty I really like them I think they're they're stylish and comfortable you can feel everything nicely through you know through the handlebars and stuff you don't have to kind of break them in I've had these again for about a month now and I've been they're kind of my go-to gloves if I'm on this style of motorcycle uh, I think they retail about 89.99 again I'll put a link below to bikerheads.co.uk so you can find your local dealer or I'll put another link as well to sports bike shop and full um, disclosure if you go to sports bike shop and you click on that link and you subsequently buy something uh, I do get a little bit of a kickback so no extra cost to you you will be helping out the channel so uh, thank you for that all right that's it for this fashion segment look forward to speaking to you again soon cheerio uh, this engine as I mentioned it's the now familiar 1200 cc liquid cool parallel twin uh, let's do that again because I said cool not cooled it's got a torque assist clutch which is uh, quite heavy to use actually but it works absolutely fine um, and all LED lighting as well so uh, yeah oh two let's do that again that was rubbish